What does it mean to be lymph node positive? Well, typically, it means that you are stage two with your breast cancer. And historically and typically, it means that you're going to receive chemotherapy. And what have the criteria been that we've used in the past to determine if patients are to have chemotherapy? Well, there are several things. Tumor size is one of them. The lymph nodes being positive is another. Certain markers like HER2 new patients need to receive chemotherapy. One of the really important steps forward recently has been the use of the Oncotype DX in lymph node positive patients. Now, the studies that have validated the use of Oncotype DX have been limited to postmenopausal women. So, let me give you a typical kind of scenario or situation where I would be using Oncotype DX in a lymph node positive patient. Typically, it's somebody who's postmenopausal. So, the hypothetical case I'll share with you is, let's say, somebody who's 65. Um, secondly, it would be in somebody who has certainly no more than three positive lymph nodes, which is what the validation study was all about. But a better example would be somebody who has one lymph node positive. Then we go ahead and order the Oncotype DX and, and get back from that a recurrence score. Current score can be anywhere between 0 and 100. In the low-risk category of recurrence scores with Oncotype DX, the data is very, very clear that there's no benefit to chemotherapy. One of the advantages of Oncotype DX has been not only will it predict the chances of the cancer coming back somewhere else in the body over the next 10 years, but that continuous measurement of the recurrence score is also helpful in telling us whether a patient will or will not benefit from chemotherapy. The high recurrence score patients clearly need chemotherapy. The intermediate risk recurrence score patients uh, are part of a national study that recently closed, but I wanna focus right now on the low risk scores. So I'm gonna give you a hypothetical patient 65 or older, one positive node out of three. Uh, in this uh, patient, the margins around the uh, tumor were negative, and the recurrence score was very, very low, let's say five or lower. That patient will not benefit from chemotherapy, but what that patient absolutely does need are the other adjunctive therapies. So if the patient's had a lumpectomy, that patient clearly needs the, need, uh, the radiation therapy. Um, the patient clearly needs to be on anti-estrogen therapy. So this is another example of where traditional things like tumor size, the status of the lymph nodes, and other factors, we now blend into that decision-making process the recurrence score or molecular data, which is helping us, therefore, really tailor the therapy to the individual patient. Let me close this particular response by saying, I treat all of my patients as if they were my relatives. So in the hypothetical case that I've given you, that patient would not receive chemotherapy, but what would receive the necessary other adjunctive therapies. Hi, I'm Dr. Jay Harness, and I want to share with you important information that I believe that every newly diagnosed patient with breast cancer needs to know. I'm a breast cancer survivor. I am a breast cancer survivor. I am a breast cancer survivor. And I want every woman to know about personalized breast cancer treatment and the genomic test. A test that helps guide a woman and her doctor to the best treatment options for her. Pass it on.